Hello everyone, welcome to our discussion from chapter five of itemized deductions. Uh, this is part one in which we will talk about medical expenses and interest. And in our second um, the part, we'll get the rest of the itemized deductions. So first of all, the thing to remember is no matter who the taxpayer is, the issue is, do you have enough itemized deductions to be more than the standard deduction? So the question that always gets asked, is something deductible? Well, if it's an itemized deduction, technically, yes, it is deductible, but it's not gonna provide any benefit to the taxpayer unless the total of their itemized deductions is more than their standard deduction. And with the increase in 2018 of the standard deduction and the, the fact that it's significant means you have to have a lot of itemized deductions. So a lot fewer people are using itemized deductions because the standard deduction has been increased uh, from what it was prior to 2018. So. And, and then there are individual restrictions on each itemized deduction that may limit how much is deductible. So you need to think through all of those uh, to see if your itemized is higher or lower than your standard. All right. And if it's lower total, then the, the, stand, the itemized deductions technically are really not deductible for that taxpayer. So the first one that we are going to look at is medical expenses for 2021. And this is the first uh, one like this we've come across. And this is what is called a floor. Your medical expenses have to be over seven and a half percent of your AGI. So remember we told you how important AGI is. So, if you have a lot of income, you have to have an awful lot of medical expenses to have any deductible. So for instance, you have $100,000 of AGI, until you get over $7,500 of medical expenses, none of them are deductible. So only the amount over the seven and a half. So if you had $8,000 of medical expenses and you had $100,000 of AGI, your floor is 7,500. So only the $500 of, I, of medical expenses over the 7,500, since you had a total of 8,000, actually count or actually are uh, deductible. So first of all, uh, if that's our overall issue, then who do we get to pay for, okay? medical expenses for ourselves or spouses and dependents that goes back to what we talked about back in chapter one and two about dependents and why that's important because if they don't qualify for as a dependent you pay somebody's medical expenses that isn't a dependent it not deductible and the other thing that you need to be very careful of when you're talking to people about their medical expenses is if it's reimbursed by insurance, it's not deductible. So if you pay the doctor bill, but then you submit that to your insurance and it pays you, then it's not deductible unless you pay more than the insurance reimburses you. So now, on the other hand, that insurance reimbursement is not income as we talked about uh, in chapter four, okay? but. Your bill at the doctor was $100, all right, your, your insurance reimbursed you 50, you only got a, a medical expense of $50. So typically the threshold that is going to get something deductible as a medical expense is, is it prescribed by a doctor? Now, traditionally we've been fairly broad and allow some deductions for things that would be sometimes um, considered outside of, you might say, um, 
traditional medicine. Uh, so as long as there was a, a professional prescription involved, that sort of thing, uh, and it was to relieve a certain condition. It can't be for your general welfare, okay? It can't be just to make you healthier. It has to be to basically treat a particular condition. So we've allowed uh, the, the things like acupuncture or something like that, as long as it was to relieve a particular uh, pain or uh, ailment, not just to make you feel better. So we're looking at when they are paid in terms of how it is, um, when it's deductible. So what we need to have, and of course that kind of hints at what we need to have as far as documentation. We need to show that it was paid in the year. All right. Some things that um, also are issues with regard to medical expenses. Okay. Let's say that you have something done to your home to allow you to get around with a particular uh, medical condition. Um, that's okay. Prescribed by a doctor or all that kind of thing. But here's what the, the tax law says. If that adjustment to your house makes your value of your home go up, you got to subtract out of the expense, okay, the, the increase in the value of your house. So the, the famous one or the most common one of this issue is um, the, the hot tub. I, I'll say the hot tub deal, all right, where uh, because of a particular ailment, your doctor says you should be in the hot tub every single day or something like that. And so instead of paying for a membership or wherever, you buy a hot tub. If you pay $5,000 for that, and let's we'll say that it's legitimately prescribed by a doctor and not, uh, you know, there's no question about that part of it. Now, the IRS is going to say, okay, but when you paid $5,000, how much of you, did your house go up in value because you have a hot tub? If you say nothing, they're going to probably argue with you, okay? But if you said, it, it, okay, it went up $3,000, but I paid $5,000, so your, your medical expense is actually $2,000. And so that $2,000 is going to be added in with all your other medical expenses, to see if you reach the seven and a half percent of your AGI situation. The IRS said in 2020 and 2021, personal protective equipment to protect against COVID-19 is part of your medical expenses. Um, hand sanitizer, anything that's uh, to do that. Now, I wouldn't see that that was going to be a significant amount, except for someone who may be has a very vulnerable situation uh, that then you might be spending quite a bit of money on filtration or other things to protect against COVID-19. Going to and from the doctor is deductible. So if you take the cab or bus or train or auto, I mean for uh, airline tickets for treatment that at, uh, at a uh, particular hospital, people come from all over the United States to get their children treated at um, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, okay? So that transportation to get them to the, would be deductible. The cost of that would be a medical expense. If you drive, you can keep track of all of your um, cost of gas and everything, or you can just figure out the mileage and use 16 cents per mile to get to it, which is far easier. All right. And especially if you're, you're making a regular trip to down to Baltimore or John Hopkins or over to uh, Philadelphia or some other place out to Pittsburgh for specialized treatment, you're going back and forth that can add up those miles and you want to 
put that in as medical expenses. If you stay overnight uh, at the location, and for a minor, you can have this cover the person um, that has, they needs to stay with them. All right, you can deduct the cost of a hotel, but it's limited to fifty dollars a night. So uh, it's a little bit silly how low that limit is. All right. Uh, Long-term care insurance, all types of medical insurance, if it is not um, paid for by your employer or already taken out of your income on your, you know, as part of your W-2, if you pay for health insurance out of your pocket, not through an employer, stuff like that, then it could, is part of your medical expenses. Long-term care insurance is a part of that, is considered part of that. However, long-term care insurance does have some limits on what you can deduct based on your age. Uh, those are provided in the textbook. Something to look up, uh, not necessarily to remember when it comes up. Oh, I lied. We're going to do state and local taxes next, and then we'll do interest on the second of our to uh, uh, podcasts. So taxes on your, uh, now you notice this is state and local taxes. So the first thing I want you to remember is federal taxes are not deductible. Just like federal refunds, when we talked about tax refunds are not taxable. No no type of federal tax, not federal income tax, not FICA tax, okay? None of those federal taxes are deductible for calculating your federal income tax. So when we use the term taxes, we're always referring to state and local taxes. Typically, that's personal property taxes, local real estate taxes, state and local income taxes, and foreign taxes, which are much, rare, much more rare, okay? We put on the Schedule A, that's where we list all of our itemized deductions. And here's the, the downside. You can pay lots of state and local taxes, property taxes, income taxes, but as you add those up, Okay, remember on medical expenses, you had to get to a certain amount and then they were deductible. You don't have to do that for taxes, but the downside is, okay, you can't deduct anything more than 10,000. So it works differently. It is a ceiling, you might say, on how much you can deduct. So, and that includes all of them, the, the property, income taxes, all of them, um, there's a few, others taxes that uh, don't count towards the 10,000 but it, it's pretty it's pretty rare and that's for married filings separately is even lower it's 5,000 real estate taxes we should talk a little bit about that okay your principal residence and you know your house you're living in but any real estate you own. So if you own property somewhere, those are all uh, deductible in this category, assuming you don't go over 10,000, okay? So any pieces of property you own inside the United States, outside the United States, doesn't matter, okay? Personal property, so it's very broad. So first of all, if it's a real estate tax, very broad. Now be be, do be careful. Sometimes you will have a special assessment. For instance, at my house, I pay my property taxes twice a year, okay? And that's deductible, that's, that's all fine. But I have a special assessment. It's, very, it's not very much, so it's not a big deal, okay? That is, those are often for some special improvement, usually some, uh, and this one is particularly for uh, the, the traffic lights in Leola, 
okay so I pay that in addition to the property taxes that special assessment is not considered a property tax that's considered an improvement to my property and therefore is not deductible all right so you have to be careful of that personal property taxes are significant in certain states in Pennsylvania not so much but in other states there can be a situation where you pay uh, property tax on your car or other types of personal assets uh, that you use they are deductible if they are based on the value of the property so in Pennsylvania you pay a license fee every year you register your car you pay the same amount whether you have a $50,000 car or a $5,000 car because there's no nothing about the value so that is not a property tax that is not deductible that's a license fee all right so if if you we had a, per, a personal property tax on our car you would have to tell them what kind it was every year you had and they would send you a bill based on this value uh, what they would consider to be the value of that your income taxes for the most part are um, taken out by your employer through your check right but as an employee but you also have if you have uh, other income other than through your employer you may pay income tax to your state um, outside of what you pay through your through your checks okay and so the key thing to remember is you're going to deduct the taxes the state income taxes local income taxes that you pay in that year so if you paid it in 2020 it's deductible in 2020 if you paid it in 2021 it's deductible in 2021 it doesn't matter that you're paying in 2021 a tax bill that you that was due that was for 2019 even if you paid it in 2021 it's deductible on your 2021 tax return and then of course we talked about the state tax return and the tax benefit some people um, will think well I'll just take that tax refund I received from the state and offset reduce the amount of tax okay that I uh, you know deduct the, in the current year on the state well my state taxes no that's not we, we don't offset refunds and amount paid are complete uh, treated separately but remember you only have income if you got a tax benefit when you deducted it so in that regard they are related but they are kept separate now for 2021 you can either take the state and local income taxes now this doesn't this isn't real estate taxes this is just the income taxes or the state and local general sales taxes paid during the year can't do both one or the other in Pennsylvania it's usually the income tax is higher you want to take the one that's the higher the best the, the highest deduction assuming that it's not again not over 10,000 all right if you don't have a state income tax then the state sales tax is going to be the your better option now you can keep every receipt you bought for the whole year okay of things that you did okay um, and, and take that actual sales tax paid during the year but that everybody when they put this in the tax law knew that no one would do that okay so there are tables provided based on your state you live in and your income and basically they're an estimate of what you pay in terms of sales tax uh, based on what's taxable in that state and tax rate and your income yeah this is what they estimate you would do and that's what you could use okay you can find a calculator on the IRS website you can find it in the instructions the thing to remember is you pay sales tax on big purchases like cars now 
Now, as we said there's not a, a property tax on cars in Pennsylvania. You pay sales tax on cars. So you buy a car in the year, you pay a bunch of sales tax on that. Okay, especially if you buy an expensive car. And that is can go towards this. So what you would do in the year that you bought a big item like that, you would keep the receipt for the car purchase. That's not too hard. And then you would look up on the table what your sales tax were for all the other items you bought during the year and add that to the amount that you paid on just the car. And in that case, it might actually be higher than your state income tax you paid during the year um, through your withholding or estimated payments. Foreign taxes are, de are deductible typically, and this is foreign income taxes, but typically you are going to be much better off by taking a credit, all right? And that we will discuss later in chapter nine, okay? Uh, to take the credit, which will basically says, if you pay tax on income that was earned outside the United States, and you pay tax to that country where you earned it, you shouldn't have to pay tax on it again in the United States unless that country has such a low tax rate, okay, that you didn't pay very much at all, you could make, you may make up the difference in the United States. All right, that's, we'll stop there and come back with part two, uh, where we'll get into interest.